be talking about acidosis in cattle. Um, so to start off, um, acidosis is just a metabolic disease that occurs due to a drop in the pH levels of the rumen. Um, in the rumen, the normal pH level is between 5.7 and 7. And once the pH drops to below 5.5, acidosis can begin to arise. And that's simply just because the acid concentration is higher than it should be. And then kind of just a general scheme for how the rumen is supposed to function is um, cattle consume the feed and then the microbes begin to digest the feed in the rumen and then the microbes grow um, they produce energy in the form of like vfas and then also protein and then the cow regulates um, the rumen environment and they just the cycle continues so um, there's two main causes for drops in um, ph levels in the rumen the first one is like a reduction in rumen movement this depresses the appetite and the overall production of the animal. And then the second thing that can happen is there can be a change in the rumen flora and um, the acid producing bacteria begin to take over and more acid is produced. And then this causes the acidosis to begin to worsen and then the acid can eventually be absorbed through the rumen wall. And that's um, if the condition gets to that point. Um, there's two different types of acidosis with the first being acute acidosis. It's also referred to as grain overload. It occurs when the rumen pH drops severely and remains low for an extended period of time. It's often due to the consumptions of too many highly digestible starches or sugars, such as in a high grain diet. Some of the symptoms include a decrease in appetite and feed consumption. They can have little to no rumination and rumination is just the act of like chewing the cud. Um, it increases the heart rate as well as the breathing rate. Diarrhea, lethargy, and potential death can also occur. Um, for the second type, subacute acidosis, it occurs when there is a temporary imbalance between acid production and the absorption of the acid. It's often due to the waves of the low and normal pH levels, and it results in decreased room and motility and absorption. Um, it's, less, it's less severe than acute, but it's often more costly to deal with. Um, some of the symptoms for this include reduced feed intake, feed efficiency, and weight gain. There can be lameness, such as laminitis or founder, dehydration, liver abscesses, and increased temperature. And here in this graph, you kind of just see the waves of the pH. Um, so what causes acidosis? Um, the first main thing is the rapid intake or switch to high grain rations. Um, carbohydrates are rapidly digested, which ferments them rapidly to produce excess VFAs, and that reduces the pH. They can also have a low fiber intake. The fiber slows down fermentation, which then slows the rate of VFA production and prevents the rapid pH drops. So without this adequate fiber in the diet, this doesn't happen. Um, also, whenever cows are returned to feed, so whether they're off feed due to being weaned, they're sick, transported, or for many other reasons, um, whenever they're put back on, they can consume too much too quickly and that reduces the pH drastically. Um, here in the rumen with acidosis in a calf, um, as you can see, these brown areas are the healthy normal papillae, um, but once the acid level gets too low, they become damaged and they slough off. So then, right here in this pink area, that's um, without the rumen papillae. So if acidosis isn't treated, lots of um, bad things per se can happen. Um, so kind of just to go through what happens again, the cycle of eating. So the eat the grain and it's rapidly fermentable. Um, then they can get acidosis due to the low rumen pH. Um, gut lesions can begin to occur. The Fusobacterium necroforum bacteria and that's the major acid producing bacteria, their populations increase. The rumen wall can abscess, lead to inflammation and potential tissue death. And then that causes the bacteria to then travel to the liver by the blood. And that can cause a bigger issue of liver, ab liver abscesses. So for prevention and treatment of acidosis, um, they kind of go hand in hand. The most important thing is to make sure that you can maintain good rumen health, and it's important to have consistent dry matter intake. Um, you wanna make sure that there's sufficient amounts of effective fiber in the diet. The fiber affects the rumen motility and saliva production that reduces the acid in the rumen. Um, you wanna watch what type of feeds 
um, feed grain you're giving your cattle. Um, you want to limit the high volumes of grains that are commonly knows, known to cause acidosis, such as wheat, barley, and corn. And then if acidosis is a common issue in a herd, the addition of ionophores may be beneficial. And the ionophores, they help to reduce acidosis by inhibiting the growth of the major acid-producing bacteria. There's my sources. And there's your sources. Any questions? Yeah, I mean, yeah. The pH is very important and motility and, oh, I know, I like that you included saliva production because like, especially for dairy cows, they have a lot of bicarbonate in the saliva and it's amazing. I saw, I can't remember how many liters a day that a dairy cow makes saliva, but I mean, it's tremendous. Yeah, there's massive amounts. Massive amounts of bicarbonate being added to that rumen that wants to go acidic. You know, the rumen wants to go acidic and you got to prevent it. So I like the, the uh, picture too of the degraded uh, epithelial layer of the rumen. Any questions from our big audience today? If not, 